Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today's flight is with the Aerosoft, or in this case, Digital Designs CRJ900, service from Hamburg over to Oslo. There was a video where we flew from Oslo, I believe. Um, so I apologize for the uh, the uh, duplicate. However, I wanted to showcase a video with the CRJ um, from Aerosoft. And uh, so this is the perfect video, I think, to do it because this is because uh, I have to bring this back to my base or to its base, which is Oslo. And uh, yeah, there won't be a lot of CRJ 900 videos, but I believe that every time I do fly the CRJ, I will make a video out of it because it's so rare that I use it. Um, and that's not because it's a bad airplane; it's actually really good plane. It's a really good plane. It's really well mi made. Um, the only thing I have to complain about is really the texturing in the cockpit. That's the only thing I don't like. It's very, very low res, as you'll see. And I have it. I have pretty much everything cranked up when it comes to textures. Um, and that's a common complaint too. However, the simulation of the systems are very well done. Like really well done. It's pretty much study level. And um, and yeah, I really wanted a CRJ that was study level, and I saw CRJ from digital design that they've just released. I've, I've been paying attention to it for the past year or whatever and so I decided to jump the gun and buy it and uh, I'm actually quite happy with it. I don't fly it a lot because there are not a, r a lot of real world routes with this airplane but I do enjoy it and it's quite fun. However I am very out of practice with this plane. I only flew this plane once actually to be honest. I only flew it once however I already love it. I already like it a lot. So I'm going to be very rusty. I'm not going to know the procedures 100% but already completed pretty much most of it. We're about to get ready for pushback. And, um, yeah. It's just that if you guys are wondering if you should buy this plane, um, I recommend it. Um, it is a completely different philosophy in how things are done, especially if you want to do it as real as possible. The way they do it is very different, and uh, it's quite interesting. And, um, yeah, I like it a lot. It's uh, definitely a cool tool, or a very cool simulation product. Um, it's it's kind of like a Dash 8 of, uh, um, what's the company called? I forgot. Majestic. There we go. It's like something completely out of the ordinary. Something completely different again. So that's the fun part and that's why I like it a lot. It's study level but also really well made done. I think it's about better. I think it's better than the A320 um, that they made. So. However, I do not know how much detail they went into, really, so I could be wrong. But in my opinion, I think it's pretty much better than the Airsoft Airbus. Anyways, we're pretty much ready to go. We're just doing the uh, starting engines check. Um, so we're just about to start our engines. So, we want to make sure our cellular phones are off. Our, uh, we want to check our fuel boost pumps. Um, I just need to... Ah, yes. Okay, so this is a little bit different here. So we're going to start at the APU first. We're going to select this to make sure the door opens, kind of like in the Airbus. Let me just wait for the door to open, which it does right now, and then we can start it. And the APU will start. The APU then should be in the auto position, which it is, and so the APU will then take over from the external power and then we can disconnect the external power. There it goes. We can now disconnect this, go into our EFB, go to, yeah, nope, that's the wrong button, ground surfaces, and we can uh, disconnect this and we'll also disconnect the wheel tucks. Then go to home again and I'm going to close every door. Uh, yeah, so we should be ready to go very soon. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Perfect. That's a nice little touch there. Um, we are going to check um, another thing here. We're going to check our DC and AC. So you just use the uh, you like once for the AC. And that is checked, and then again for the DC. And that is all checked. And then you can we'll go back to uh, status. 
good there. There, we'll the fuel pumps, boost pumps will go on. Switch both to on. And we verify the messages that they are on, which they are. Hydraulics all to auto and on, which they are. Okay. That is checked. Passenger signs are on and auto. And doors are closed. Party brake is on and beacon can now come on. At this time we'll request GSX to push us back. So let's go ahead and do that. Wanna so, prepare for pushback and departure. Tail to the left. And uh, no. So I'm not 100% aware of this procedure, or I don't know 100% a lot about it, but when I read the FCOM, um, usually on the first flight of the day, uh, the left engine is started first to do a, a fuel test, or fuel bo boost pump test, or fuel valve test. So we're going to try and do that, we'll see how that works. However, normally you start engine number two. So it is very common to start engine number two. So for any user like you, for any other user, it's just just start engine number two first. That's normally what you do. It's the uh, better and safer way to do it. Um, uh, so, departure check completed. Bypass bin inserted. Release parking brake. Let's see if this is really simulated. This test, and I don't know why. There we go. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. So, start engine one. Yes. Just uh, select engine one start. And then at twenty percent N two you introduce fuel. Just N one at twenty percent N two. Check here. Performance. Um, flex temp. You just uh, for flex temp, you usually just choose out uh, choose the uh, temperature that the outside temperature, which I believe is 23 degrees, or one above. Then. Nope. Uh, what is the outside air temperature? Uh, it is. Um, I don't know. Twenty-five, so I'll do twenty-six. There we go. So engine one is started. Set parking brakes. Set our parking brake. And we'll do the uh fuel valve check. So fuel boost pumps come off. And there should be a right fuel fuel low pressure light. Which Unlocking gear. Or it shouldn't appear actually. Truck disconnected. Bypass and then you turn them back on. 
And now we can start engine number two. I mean, that's pretty much it. So we'll start engine number two. Like I said, I don't know, I don't know much about this airplane, so... Right is clear. And fuel into the system. And most of it here goes away. So one thing you might find weird is... Is you do all of the uh, V speeds and stuff before you taxi, which is really odd. And but I'm going to do it anyways. And go ahead and do it, and you program the F MCP as well. And I think this is because when you start the APU, you lose a lot of fuel, and because it's a, such a light airplane, every little kilogram counts. So I think that's why they do it so late. Um, but I honestly don't know why. But in the FCOM. Um, the official one, the, they do it at the uh, before taxi flow. So after start flow, you want to make sure your generators are in the auto position, which they are. Our fuel pumps are set and there's no lights on a straight. Please and packs, auto and on. Anti-ice is not required, pro feeds come on. We'd again check our electrical pages, so like AC. We can see the engines have taken over, and then we can go back to status. Trucks in the area should be clear, and then we check the flight controls. And you check the rudder, which is also good to go. That page is selected. No dual steering now can come on or be armed. Quite important to have, I would say. Transponder, we do not need to set anything and we do the after search checklist. So, generators are auto, fuel pumps, fuel pumps are set, bleeds and packs auto on, anti ice set, probes on, electrics checked. Uh, Chalk scenario clear, rudder checked, no dual steering armed, transponder is set. And uh, that is the after start checklist so before taxi, go ahead and turn the lights on that you need. So in this case taxi light can actually these are recogs. So the nose light in this case comes on. You would uh, press toga. Which I don't remember where that is. I don't remember. Uh, this is definitely not toga. Oh it is. Look at that, take off, take off. Crazy. So it is Toga. Um, flight controls are checked. Flaps will set to 8. So we'll set our flaps to... I believe that's 8. Yep, that is set to 8. Reverses are armed. Checked. We're seeing here V speeds now. We go ahead and set that. We go to V-Speeds, you just simply enter flaps 8, and then set takeoff. Voila, and they automatically set. So you can save your time there, which is very nice. Trims we also need to make sure is set. So you go here, and it should indicate 6.8, I think it was. 6.9. So we enter in 6.9. Oop, a little bit too far. There we go. Let's go ahead and turn that off. EFIS is checked, FMS is set as auto tune, and before takeoff, above the line can be completed now. So, flight controls checked, flaps 8, cluster, the thrust reversers armed, BTMS, don't know what that really means, is checked, uh, V speeds is set and checked, trims green and centered, 6.9 units, EFIS is checked, FMS is auto tune, shoulder harness is on, that is the above the line check. So now, we just go ahead and taxi to our runway. So, fuel, uh, what am I saying, fuel? Um, parking brake comes off and we can start taxiing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up my chart so I know where I'm going. Um, 
pretty much straight ahead. And we'll go ahead and, uh... Yeah, nothing about the APU. That usually does uh, take an off... I think after takeoff. Yeah. After takeoff, the APU comes off, which is interesting. But that's what the FCOM says. I do like this reflection profile. I haven't seen a reflection profile yet that r does a nice uh, reflection job on the wings. Um, that's hard to uh, find. Okay, can we taxi this way? Yes, we can. make sure that I started my flight. Radar. There we go. So that's good to go. Alright. It looks like it's arriving from the other side, which is, mm, I don't know, uh, the wind's forecasted are uh, expecting 2-3, and the winds currently are variable, but they're favoring 2-3-0, they're in the 2-3-0 range, so we'll have traffic live a little bit on there, that's normal. I usually do a good job of choosing the right runway, but um, or they do at least, but uh, not this time. Now, so looks like we'll be getting some. Uh, we'll be in a waiting line. However, I don't know. Ooh, what if they turn left? That's not going to be good. I don't know, I feel like they would go a different way if they really would not be departing from 2-3. That's just my guess. Yeah, okay, so 2-3 looks like it is active now. So I'm going to wait on... I think... I don't know how it works in Air Force. Usually ADC, I think, chooses who goes first, but I'm going to let Luxair go first. So we're just going to wait here. So runway heading is bugged. Runway initial fix set on MFTs, flap setting is set, thrust setting is set, thrust limit is set, and FMS takeoff configuration is checked, takeoff config OK. Alright, let's continue here. 
fuel is check, make sure there's no leaks, there aren't, 3,900 kilograms are still there. And we can do before takeoff check what's below the line, which is... Final takeoff briefing completed, flight attendant has been notified, takeoff configuration checked, and fuel with 3,900 kilograms on board. The minimum fuel of... Um, what was the minimum fuel? Let's check here. Just, I, I, don't think it, I don't think it says, but... Minimum fuel... Mm, 4,035, okay. We are a bit under that. That's not great. However, I've got the APU to blame, which is something you can't really enter in here. Then next time I'm going to check APU, because there's an APU option in the PFPX that you can select in case you're using it for uh, takeoff or whatever. So I think I'm going to check that next time and see what the values are then. Um, but for now, we're going to ignore it. We're going to be fine. It's just a sim for now. Um, I do take it very seriously, but whatever. Um, not not this plane because I'm still learning it. So runway item checks. Ignition anti ice set as required. We do not need a lights. Um, we can leave as is for now. All right, so we did not choose the wrong runway. I knew it. See, I knew that 23 would be selected eventually. So I guess that arriving runway was just the last one to come in until the runway actually changed. So we'll just hold right here. Oh, he's lining up, so we can continue. All right, next check, gravity X flow. I think it's the... Fuel Xflow manual light man Xflow. Alright, that's it. Man, manual, and then we check the status here. Manual Xflow is checked. Alright, that is checked. Oh, look at the 707 Lufthansa. That's nice. And then we can switch it back to automatic. So, parking brake set. I expect him to wait a little bit longer. Um, and this is a uh, prop plane. Alright, there he goes. So we can line up problem. So let's park your brake coming off. Go and set recog taxi lights, although they stay off for takeoff. So strobe lights coming on. Increase your thrust to get on the runway. And set our weather radar. So weather and weather on his side. And I'm not sure whether this is Alright, weather on this side. We are a bit faster than him, so we're just gonna wait a little bit longer. I think as soon as we line up, we should be fine. Wait, are those the times of intersections? Oh wow, that's a cool feature. I've never seen that on a fixed feature. That's 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 really cool. Alright, he's turning left, so we could technically go now. I'm gonna go on landing lights coming on. And we'd start our clock as well. Um, I just wanna make sure I'm doing it right, so let's just concentrate on lining up. And, um, what was it for? Let's we'll just do chrono. Let's see how our lineup was. Okay, not too shabby. Alright, and let's go. 
Uh, you can set it to full thrust and it will automatically derate itself. Wait, there's such thing as Metaflex? Alright, just go to max. Knots is checked. B1 rotate. Positive rate you gear up. Okay. Trim out the plane a little bit. Select nav. on FMS 1 middle marker it is a noise departure departure procedure uh, 1 so now we go to climb thrust Oh, another sensitive uh, throttle. Go and turn on the autopilot. We'll go to speed mode. Flaps coming up. We'll increase our altitude as well. Speed to 250, and I think it's going to pitch down. So, yep. I don't know why it does that. QNH set standard standard go and set our altitude a little bit higher now to uh, our alt or uh, cruise which is 370 which I hope we make I'm not sure 370 we'll actually make sure we're set to climb <coughs> and again sensitive right, I'm just gonna keep it there so APU now coming off lights and those lights coming off. 10,000 feet go to speed of 280. First reverse is coming off. ICAS should be cleared, recirculation fan is off. Can now come on. After takeoff checklist. Landing gear up, flaps zero. Fuel of explode auto, APU and bleed set, landing lights off, thrust reversers off, ICAS checked and cleared. Let's 
go ahead and increase our range, which is nice. That is us airborne. So I think I need to set something here with the sensitivity because it's incredibly sensitive. Um, I don't think there's anything like the F-Slides where you can program your sensitivity. Um, but I'm going to see what I can do with FSU IPC. So yeah, anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know there's a little bit of a little bit of uh, issues here and there, but that's because I don't know my way around this aircraft very well. And so that's causing me to be a little bit uh shaky. Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in part two when we land in Oslo. Wish me luck.